Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, and I'm going to be showcasing a challenge from Angstrom CTF that went on throughout these past couple days. Um, I'd like to show you the crypto challenge called One Time Bad, because it's kind of interesting. It is a one-time pad, I'm assuming, considering the title here, kind of a reference to a one-time pad cryptography section um, and technique in here. But it, it's peculiar, so it says, my super secure service is available now. Heck, even with the source, and we can download the source, I bet you won't figure it out. They give us a service to connect to with netcat and okay we can go ahead and do this so i'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal i'll bring this over so you can see it and let's make a directory for the ctf because i haven't just yet in any, any other videos i'm gonna make a directory for this one time bad and let's hop over there let me make a quick connect.sh script because i think that is a good practice just to have it saved and let's go ahead and download that source too i'm gonna grab that link location and just w get it into this directory. All right, cool. So now we can check out what this is with Sublime Text, and I'm actually going to connect to the service so we can kind of uh, move back and forth and understand what this is actually doing. It says, Welcome to my one time pad service. It's so unbreakable that if you do manage to decrypt my text, I'll give you a flag. You'll be given the ciphertext and a key for samples, and the ciphertext for when you try to decrypt, all will be given in base64, but when you give your own answer, give it an ASCII. So it looks like we have two options. We can go and enter enter the number one to get a sample or the number two to actually try and decrypt something. So if we interact with this, we can do number one, get a couple samples of this one-time pad thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then if we were to actually try and use the number two, I'll go ahead and reconnect so you can see that a little bit better. It'll give us this in base64, which is something that has been encrypted with the one-time pad, but we would need to go ahead and determine what it is. So if I were to answer something, um, it would tell me no, we need to actually answer this, and that was the key that it had used. So we need to figure out how can we reverse this one-time pad, how can we solve this challenge. Um, if you look at the code that's actually using to generate this one-time pad, it's kind of interesting. This OTP function, so that one-time pad, is just doing a regular one-time pad cryptography kind of cipher and technique. They take one string and they take another string and they are XORing each specific part of it. The interesting thing is though, with the one-time pad, you're using a key that is the exact same length as the original message, as the plain text. You can see that here in this gen sample function, we have P, which can be our plain text, kind of our message, and you can see that K, or what they use the key to go ahead and encrypt this with, is the length of the plain text. So the hard part is how can we determine a one-time pad or how can we determine a key if we could never potentially know what the next key, the next character in the key is? There aren't any easy attacks for this sort of thing. The strength of the one-time pad is that it, you can only use this key one time. The gimmick with a lot of these, and if you see them in challenges and capture the flag, it's that maybe that key will be reused or you as the operator, you as the player interacting with it will be able to encrypt something and maybe encrypt something multiple times and then see, okay, now we now we could potentially break the key because we have lots of different examples where we can control the plain text and we know that this key is being used, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is with this challenge is that it's using this gen sample function every single time, whether or not we're asking for a choice for of a sample. And again, it, it doesn't let us encrypt something of our own that we supply, it'll determine a message for us randomly. And if we were to go and, and try to decrypt something, um, well, or excuse me, try number two to decrypt something, it'll still end up using gen sample, which as you can see, just pulls random letters. Interesting thing though, is that they're doing this random int number of times, which could be anything between, okay, a length of one to length of 30 peculiar, and we're all using ASCII characters. This is where you might kind of notice, well, hang on, what if I were to keep tinkering with this and request samples where I were to eventually get something that were really, really small? You can see some of these guys here, they're kind of tiny. There is even the potential to get one string that is literally only one character long. In that case, we know that the key will only have to be one character, and since we know it's only in the range of the alphabet, well, perhaps we have the opportunity to get something or solve and decrypt something with just kind of a blind guess, just a brute force where we would say, okay, maybe something actually did end up with a one length message and a one length plain, plain uh, excuse me, plain text, one length cipher text, one length key. So what we could do is to spam this service repeatedly until we actually got something that was only one length long. And you could see, Okay, maybe three is an option, etc. 
but we know there will be one potential case where, hey, we might get lucky and only one length key ciphertext message will pop out. So what we could do is we can hammer this service. That's kind of the gimmick for this challenge. Maybe there's another way to solve it, but that is what I kind of thought. So let's go ahead and create an ape.py script, and I'm going to go ahead and beat this thing up. So I'll use user bin environment Python as my shebang line. I'm going to be using Python 3 because Python 2 is dead. So let's do from pwn import all. We have our simple connect script, so I'll just grab that line here so I could copy out the host, make a simple variable for that. That's obviously going to be a string, and I'll grab the port as well, so that way we can connect to it. I'll just say S, so it's kind of a throwaway variable for our remote connection. We're connecting to that host and the port, and I'm using this remote function out of the Pwn Tools library. That's why I use the from Pwn import star, because now they're all already included in my namespace. So what we could do, just kind of a sanity check, let's print out what we receive and make sure we can actually get something with that. So let's run our ape script, open the connection, and you can see that prompt is coming right there. Really simple, really easy. We know that's going to be displayed every time we connect, but since we could repeatedly try and request things to decrypt, we could just start a loop where we might try to decrypt one thing, offer one, uh, like, hey, could I try and decrypt something, that choice number two, and repeatedly just send the letter A. Honestly, that's literally it, to see maybe we could get something, depending on the length of this random generator, to get something that we could decrypt, which is a blind guess just with the brute force. Another idea I had was, hey, could I just span this over and over again and maybe eventually wait until the uh, pseudo-random number generator will recycle and start again? But I feel like that's just more exhaustion than it needs already. Let's go ahead and uh, do s.receive to get our sample, or let's, first we should send the number two, right? Because that is the choice that we're gonna make. We'll receive some input, and I'll go ahead and display that out just so we can kind of see this in action. And then we'll go ahead and send what we want it to decrypt as, because when we were interacting with the service, we knew that, okay, you said ask it for something to decrypt, and you could answer it with A. If you were to get it correct, which we could see in the source, it would just go ahead and spit out the flag. We know the flag format for the CTF is ACTF. That's just kind of been what Angstrom has went with. So we could test, hey, is that actually in our result? Let's say um, answer, just create a variable for this. Let's go ahead and print that out just to have it in case things go wrong. But we'll also test if the ACTF kind of flag format is in that answer. What we'll do is we can, I don't know, display it again, or we'll just go ahead and quit. We'll say, okay, stop hammering the service. Now we've already got what we want here. So let's try this. Uh, right now we just have a one-time shot and it's very likely or unlikely that we will get it or won't get it. Um, but this actually brings up a good point. Because I'm using Python 3 and using Pwn tools in that rendition, what that remote and that socket object is going to bring in and out, their input and output is done in bytes. So I need to prefix this ACTF with a B. If I were to use that with Python 2, it would probably handle it just fine. Um, there we go. Yeah, you see that that B prefix isn't there for things. Use Python 3. It's Python 2 is dead. I saw a lot of stuff in the CTF that was saying, hey, use Python 2. And it's like, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. There we go. Okay. Now we can just loop this and hammer it until eventually we find our flag. Let me do that. While one. And then just chunk that out to a new logic branch and hammer the service. Eventually, promise I... Please, I promise, you can believe me, please trust me, this will eventually get it. Um, I actually got really lucky with it when I just kind of spammed this and then I, I would open other connections and just try it again. I don't know why, <laughs> and eventually it got it. And there we go, okay, cool. So what we did is we abused the fact that it would only supply a random length string, and because of that could potentially be literally a length of one, well, if we were to decrypt that, again, we know, okay, we've only got some potential possibilities for what the string might be, and A is a fine candidate, because just literally choosing one value in the original alphabet, what would be the plain text or what would be built out of the key, that works just fine for us. So there's our flag, ACTF, and what we could do if we wanted to kind of streamline this to a answer get flag script, then we can move ape to get flag.py. Let's Python 3 that. Excuse me, Python 3 get flag. Eventually it will try, eventually, eventually it will return the flag for you because it's just hammering the service until it gets lucky with the random number. I thought this was a strange challenge, right? Because it's not showcasing any weakness or vulnerability with a one-time pad. Maybe it's just showcasing so you learn what a one-time pad is, but the vulnerability or at least what we can abuse and take advantage of in this case is the fact that, well, we might get lucky with the super duper tiny 
one length string. And that's pretty awesome. So there we go. That is that flag. That is that challenge. We can go ahead and hit finish here. And now I've marked that as complete with what that finish script does. If you don't know what that is, uh, I went ahead and created it in my Pico CTF challenge, where all it would do is it would take the current directory, move that directory to now with a complete suffix, and then I would move back in the previous directory, the parent directory. So that way I can move on to another challenge. So that's that. That is the one-time bad challenge what you could submit and get 100 points for for Angstrom CTF. Easy peasy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press that like button. If you didn't like it, press the dislike button twice so I know you didn't like it that much. And do all the YouTube algorithm things. Subscribe, comment, um, hit the bell thing. And I'd love to see you guys on my Discord server. There's a link in the description. Tons of smart people in there. Love to see you guys on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. Love to see you on PayPal. Love to see you on Facebook. Love to see you on Instagram. Love to see you on Twitter. Love to see you on LinkedIn. All right. That's the end of the video. Thank you guys. I love you. I'll see you in the next one.